and welcome to Geordie Leather. Before we get started in today's video, have a quick look at what you could have if you came across to geordieleather.com and became a member. All of these wonderful services and features just for our members. So check it out. Now, let's get on with the video. Hello and welcome to today's video. Now, I'm involved in quite a few different charities and I work a lot with the disabled. Now, a lot of the feedback I'm getting from my uh, disabled friends is that they would love to get into leather work, but they just can't manage the stitching, the sewing side of it. They don't have the, the dexterity in their fingers and the strength to stitch. So I thought, well, I don't want to discourage people from getting involved in the hobby. I'm very keen to encourage everybody. So today's project is a project which requires no stitching whatsoever. I want to do a few projects like this just for people that have problems with stitching, even able-bodied people. I often get comments in my forum and other places on the Georgia Leather community where they say they, they're not very good at stitching. Can I do a bit of leather work without stitching? So yes, you can. There's lots of things we can do which don't require stitching. So today's project is this little thing here. This is a nice little simple beginner project. It's a pen holder. Allows you to put this around your neck and if you're like me you're always losing your pen so this little device this little gadget keeps your pens pencils with you wherever you are and they're always to hand you just simply squeeze it you can pull out your pen and pencil release it and that grips them keeps them nice and snug so it's always with you so let's have a closer look at it first of all um, if you look on the the side camera you can see it's a simple very simple design i've tried to reduce the need for sharp corners and intricate cutting with this pattern. So it's a very simple rectangle with gently rounded edges. Nice one, two, three, four, five, six, very straight, easy cuts. Um, the edges are just simply glued together with contact glue and it's been stained this sort of tortoise shell color. A uh, couple of holes for the, the neck string and a slot it's a very, very simple project, so we're going to cover that today. Uh, before I forget, there is a pattern for this. Um, again, it's available in both A4 and letter size paper for our American friends. So you can download this from the Georgia Leather community website at georgialeather.com. Um, print it off, make yourself a nice little card pattern. I've showed you how to do this in previous videos, but Stick a little piece of card, cut it out, and you've got a permanent pattern to reproduce this project whenever you want to. So, normal terms, it's free for the next three days to everybody. After that, it gets moved across to the members only section of the site, where if you want to download it, you need to join. So, fair enough. Okay, so we're going to make this from vegetable tanned leather. Um, you could make it from whatever you want, really. Even non-leather products, canvas, thick material, but obviously this is a leather work show, so we'll do leather today. Um, we'll get some veg turned out. Uh, again, the dimension's not that important. Not too thick, but thin enough to, so that when you take out the, the pens, it's not too thick at this point here, because otherwise you won't be able to get your pens in there easily. So um, let's get some leather out and have a look. trusty leather drawer. It's very handy just by the side there. So some veg tan. Uh, let's measure this for you. Uh, my little trusty measurer. So this is 2.1 at that position. 2, 2, pardon me, 1.8. So as you know with leather, leather being a natural product it isn't a consistently thickness, even thickness all the way through. It's, it varies depending on the position of the piece of skin that you're cutting. So this is an average of 1.8 to 2 mil thick veg tan. So if I take my little pattern and we just find a nice spot. Again, always look at the leather before you put your pattern on. You see that we have some blemishes here, some creasing. So we want to try and avoid those. But then again, it depends on your perspective. Some people like to see blemishes and creases in leather work. It gives a more authentic, natural appearance. Others like things as perfect as possible. I'm in between. I like a bit of both. So um, 
looking at them, I'm going to try and avoid this creased area because it's a bit too flexible there. It's a little bit stiffer in this corner, so I'm going to take this area here. So we take a scratch all. If you remember, a scratch all is basically a tool, a pointy tool, which you can scratch like a pen around patterns to transfer the design. So I'm going to put my pattern here. I'm going to avoid that little mark there. Just check your on it right camera so just hold your pattern firmly against it and just gently scratch around the perimeter of the cardboard pattern to transfer the design to the leather now obviously you don't want to move your pattern as you're doing it so there we go now this pattern has four holes which I suggest you punch while it's in the same position because once you move it it's always difficult to get things lined up so this pattern has two parts to it um, so you can see a front and the back they're exactly they're exactly the same except the front has a slot in the front and the pens the back doesn't so on one piece punch through just mark those two holes there For the slit and your two holes for the neck cord so you can see only do that only do this part here these two holes here on the front panel the back panel obviously doesn't have those so remove your pattern and then we're ready to cut out this piece of leather so again it's a very very simple um, shape so it's very easy to cut use my safety ruler it's very important to be safe in the work so let's just start by make sure I'm on camera you can see that properly so just line your ruler up to the, the line you've created with your scratch all keep the blade of your knife nice and square to the bench so it doesn't create an undercut or an overcut and just cut along those four straight lines my glasses on otherwise I can't see very well there you go just a little bit you don't have to do it in one heavy cut just score it and go over it a few times obviously the sharper your blade the better it cuts the quicker it cuts and the safer it is so I purposely designed this so it was a very easy shape to cut out for those that don't have very good hand dexterity or strength so almost done I'm keep making sure that you're on the camera otherwise you can't see what I'm doing can you so let's just do that and finally those two little angled bit at the top like I say I purposely made this simple but you can make these whatever shape you want you can have nice rounded corners scallops rounded tops rounded bottoms whatever you fancy that's the beauty of leather work you can do it your own way you haven't got to do it the way that everybody else says to do it do it your way right so there we have let's look at that on the overhead cam and the side cam that's our first piece cut out. Now, you need to do that again for the back before we do the holes. So, see if I can get the back off this off cut. I can, so I'll just quickly do the same thing again. Utilize that nice straight edge. Let's see if we have to cut a little bit. It's not quite square, so I'm gonna bring it in slightly. There's my scratch all. Again, just go around. Keeping your pattern firmly pressed against the leather so it is so the awl doesn't slip under it and scratch it and make a nasty mark. Again, I live on a farm so I get constant ATVs going backs and forwards, which is a pain when you're recording video. So apologies for that. We're moving soon to hopefully somewhere without ATVs. So I'll just do that again this is the back piece so there aren't going to be any holes here so I'm not going to punch the holes at all at the moment in the back piece I'll show you why later so very quickly I'll cut this out and we'll come back 
So I've cut the leather, as you can see on the bench, that's those two pieces. We've got our, our front piece with the marks for the holes and the back piece with no marks. So um, the plan obviously is to glue these back to back. So because we're going to put in holes just in the front panel and a slit in the front panel, we need to do that before we glue it together. So I'm going to use my little trusty anvil to make the holes. Now, there's no set size here. I'm going to use, I think, two and a half millimetre hole punch. So uh, here's my punch. Where are we, best camera? There we go. So as you can see, my vision isn't brilliant, so I, I mark all my punches with a little label. I know, I know. But um, so the plan is to just zoom in so you can see that better. You can see these are the two marks for the, the slit hole. I'm going to take a hammer. I just position the dry punch over that hole. Make sure it's nice and straight. It's important. You don't want a wonky hole. hole. So we'll give that a few taps. So just take that out. A little tip here, when you're using dry punches, sometimes the dry punch can get stuck in the leather. Now, a little tip, if you take some beeswax, just ordinary beeswax, and just push your punch into that. That lubricates the, uh, the tip a bit, and it makes it a bit easier to pull it out once you've punched your hole. So I'll do the second one. Give that same whack and that's a lot easier as you can see. So we have our two holes okay, on the, opposite, the top camera there you can see. So we're going to just basically put a slot between there so you can get special slotting tools but why bother it's just a straight cut so it's very easy. So back on the bench let's take our straight edge lined up so you can see that properly and just just get an idea of where you think the center of the hole is it's not massively important if it was off a millimeter or so but line it up as you can see and then just cut straight keeping your blade nice and straight again do it in more than one pass if you don't have the strength to cut thick however but the cleaner the cut you can make, the better the finished product will look. Now we only want to avoid slipping and cutting into the, the second hole. So don't necessarily cut all the way to the hole. Just cut short of it and then turn it around and you can just finish it off from that direction. You can see I haven't got that quite centred on that hole but when it's full of pens you aren't going to see it anyway so not massively important so there we have our slit and you see a nice clean slit okay so see so we'll leave the the next string holes until the very end you could individually punch both pieces but you may have a slight issue when you come to line things up that the holes aren't perfect so i find it's actually easier to glue things together and then to punch the holes through both pieces of leather at the same time. Get a nice clean hole that way. So at this point, this is a good time to um, stain it. If you want to stain it, any colour you want. I used a, a, a sort of a, what was it called? Some people like to know the exact details. So looking at my chart, I'll zoom out slightly for you. Remember we made this chart in an earlier video. So this is the, the English Bridal um, Phoebe's Pro Dye. So if you want to get the exact same colour, Phoebe's Pro Dye English Bridal. But any colour you want, I even leave it totally natural and just put a clear finish on. That's the beauty with leather work. You can do whatever you want. There's no fixed way of doing things. So, so um, our next step is to either dye it now 
or stick them together and die. It's not massively important, easily to die now, but because of time restraints, recording things live like this. I'm actually going to glue it together now and then stain it afterwards. So, so these two are going to come together and all we want to do is put a, a little bit of contact adhesive maybe quarter of an inch about six millimeter all the way around on both sides and then glue them together so let's get some glue out um, let's get myself a little i got a ton of these little plastic cards from a bankruptcy sale and they're very useful for putting glue and things on so um, Get the top off. I'm one of those disabled people that have problems using my hands so I can understand where these people are coming from. So a little bit of glue on there and there we go. So get my little trusty spatula. It's getting a bit worn this one. I may actually use a metal one just for a bit of variety show you something different so like I said are you on camera let's check we are a little bit of glue and just go around the edge see about six mil because we aren't stitching this it needs to have quite a, a large glued area normally you wouldn't put as much glue on uh, leather work like this but because we're not stitching it there's no physical uh, you know, fixing, so it's relying entirely on the glue. So it's important we get a nice wide border of glue there. And because the pens don't really take up very much space inside the, the pen case, there's plenty of space for the glue. So I'll finish doing this and we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, so that's the glue applied. So it should have gone tacky by now. So as you can see, before I stick it together, it's about a quarter of an inch, six mil border of glue on both pieces. So the next task is just to carefully bring them together and try and make sure that all the edges line up nice and neatly. So we'll start at the top. It, with contact you've got a few seconds to play with it generally before it goes completely solid but uh, there we go so it's just the end that needs to be pressed that's where the glue is so I'm going to take a bone folder and just go around the edges Down, nice and firm so because there's no physical thread holding it together it's important it's a very good glue bond you don't want those ends coming apart so really press that glue together so it makes a good contact so there we have our two pieces glued together and you see I haven't quite got things lined up on one side that's sensation of flush but they say there's a little bit of a lip so I want to take, quickly take that off with a knife just so it makes it easier to um, burnish when we come to burnish it. Just go along the edge like that. And there we go. Now, if you want to get a nice clean highly polished burnished edge it's important that your edges are both perfectly level and nice and smooth otherwise you'll never get a good burnished edge so at this point normally I let the glue dry a bit to harden off before I started spreading it to work this area here but um, like I see it, I'm going to burnish it quite hard to a high polish so it's important that these edges are nice and smooth so let's take a small sanding block these little sanding blocks are quite useful I use them a lot 
and just make sure that your edge is nice and square give it a gentle rub with your sander so the more time you spend sanding the edges making sure they're perfectly smooth the better burnish you're going to get it's sometimes useful if you've got a nice flat surface to put that on so you can get right up to the edge without it flexing too much that allows you to get that edge nice and square let's go around so those two joined pieces of leather are butted up nice and snug and got a nice flat surface so it shouldn't require very much if you've done the cutting accurately if you haven't then you require more sanding to get the edges nice and flush but you really need a, a decent little block little sanding block these are useful um, again I'll put a link to this in the description below the video on the website um. <clears throat> so once you've done that all your edges are nice and smooth the next then ready for the the next step so I'll finish getting this nice and smooth then we'll come back okay so we've, we've done that if you quickly look at the um, overhead cam if you zoom in so you get a better view of that you can see that the edge is nice and flat it's nice and square all the way around and there's no separation of the two layers of leather so if we didn't have that at this stage we wouldn't, wouldn't get a good burnish so that's important so like I say, the next step would be to um, put the dye on at this stage so we'll get some nice dye out um, I'll be adventurous and do a, a rather different color I like this but just to show you I have got more than two colors black and brown I do have more colors that are over here Let's pick a colour and we'll do that now. Let's have a look at the board. And I'll zoom out so you've got a better view of that. So let's be really daring and go with a green. Yes, so this is the Pro Dye series, the green colour. So let me find that Pro Dye green. Here we are, green. The usual procedure protect your bench and your hands from the dye it's just so we're going to need a wool dauber you can use whatever you want, cloth, brush, sponge. I like wool daubers, but everyone's got different ideas. So let me just find a wool dauber. Everything's to hand in my workshop. I've got a very confined space, so I've got to have everything within arm's reach, which is very important for an efficient workshop. So uh, give it a gentle, gentle shake. Don't shake it hard, it'll get all frothy and bubbly. It's a gentle rock and forth. Again, fingers crossed I can get the childproof top off. Oh, first time, isn't that amazing? So as you can see, it's a very vivid green. And I've already spilled some of my gloves, so this is why we wear um, gloves. Right, so I'll do the back first. Isn't that really dark green? Can you see that on the camera? Yep. Yeah. So, in fact, I'll do the edges first. Just go around the edge. It's all going to soak in anyway. Probably going to take at least two coats. So, just rub it in. Make sure you get a good coverage without too many obvious streaks or swirls or blotches. A reasonable first covering so let's turn it over we'll do the same with the front if you do a swirling motion it tends to mask sort of streaks and lines a bit more than doing straight strokes you can do both it's not really that big a deal but 
I've just found over the years that if you do a swirling circular motion you get a better coverage. Okay, just get into those little holes. If you want to just quickly pull out that little tongue there, get your dauber in there so you get the edge of that as well. It's a good time to do it. Just get really squashed into those little nooks and crannies. And just give it another oops, going over. So that's the first coat. Again, you don't need to wait very long between coats, so I'm going to start with the edges again. Go around the edges. Obviously with each coat it gets a bit darker. Put the back. But some of this will rub off with a cloth so it won't um, be as dark as it looks now. So once you think it's fairly even without any obvious swirls, then that's basically what you want. So it's quite warm here at the moment. We're in the UK and we're having a lovely summer, lovely warm sunny days, which is a, a rarity in this country. So there we go, I think that's basically that. Put the top back on before I go and spill this everywhere. Uh, so we'll give that a few minutes just to dry. Maybe just prop it up so that the air gets around it and gives it more a quicker drying experience. So once that's done, um, we're going to burnish it, get those edges nicely polished. I forgot something, didn't I? I forgot to do the edging. Not important, we can do that now, and while the dye is handy, we can touch those edges up. So, I'm going to very quickly take these gloves off. I don't want to get dye on my nice edging tools. So, I'm going to take a which this is a, a size two edge beveler. So, we'll just take the project, make sure you're on camera, otherwise, you can't see what I'm doing. Very quickly, take a little edge off all the way around. And let's do the same with the front. obviously better to do this when the leather's dry. When it's wet like this it's going to snag a little bit as it is now. So do it before you die. Don't make my silly mistake. That's making a bit of a balls up isn't it? But never mind. And along the bottom. Don't get any wrinkles around the edge, just take a bone folder and that'll okay, this is going to be highly polished when you burnish it so you're not going to see any of this anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry properly before we come back and burnish it. Okay, so that's that done. I'm gonna find these can take a, a cloth and just rub off the excess um, dye. Quite a nice colour green, that it's sort of beige green. Just go around it. Ideally you should let it dry a bit longer, but I don't have time because I'm making a video. So just okay, don't worry too much about the edges because they're gonna get a lot of time spent burnishing those, bringing those up to a nice high gloss. Now if you've watched my burnishing videos, you know how to do it, but I'll give you a quick, quick recap how we do burnishing on leather now. So it's that, this, the cloth just takes off a little bit of excess, I keep saying glue for some reason, a bit of excess dye. I've got glue on the mind at the moment, don't know why. 
Okay, so there we go. I think that's a really nice patina. Obviously, it's a bit dark. It will lighten as it dries out and the the the, the um, dye evaporates properly, so it will get lighter. But so to burnish, two ways you can do it: by hand or by machine. Generally, I use a machine these days. It's so much quicker. I'll show you both techniques now. So you use a burnisher. Um, most people will probably have a little burnisher like this, very common little tool, or you can get bigger burnishers like this. This is um, a one from a company called Just Wood, and they specialize in making these larger burnishers. Again, I'll put a link in the description if you want one. So um, you can use just plain water, or you can use a burnishing cream. Let's have a look. Probably the most common burnishing cream is uh, gum tragacanth. That's a mouthful, isn't it? But personally, I prefer the Japanese tokenol. Tokenol is a it's a cream made in Japan. You have to import it from Japan, so it's a bit more expensive than the the Phoebe's gum tragacanth, but it does a much better job, I I think. But if you don't have any of those, you can just use plain water. So let's find some plain water. And what we're going to do is just uh, make sure we're on camera. Just take a little sponge, squeeze off the excess water, and just run along the edge that you're going to burnish. And then take your little burnishing tool, find an appropriate size groove, and just rub it backwards and forwards as fast as you can. And already you can see that's creating a nice rounded over edge and bringing up a bit of a shine. I don't know if the camera's picking up that. So let's try and zoom in slightly so you get a better view. See the rounded edge forming on the edge there? Now, like I say, it requires a lot of patience, a lot of elbow grease, but the more effort you put in, the better the edge you'll get. But I'm getting too old for this, so I use a machine. I'll show you. I'll show you the machine next. So this is a, a burnisher. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, this is a UK brand. It's again just wood. I'm not endorsing the particular brand. It just happens to be what I have. But you can get good Chinese ones and good other ones from all over the world. But a burnisher basically comes with a wooden pre-turned wheel with um, nice nicely turned rounded edges and a groove which creates that nice rounded over effect we want on the edge. I mean, if you look at this view there that's the the hand tool it's not bad but it's not brilliant either it requires a lot of physical effort to get a good edge which I'm just getting too lazy to do now I think so I'm going to use the machine again just some water over the edge and then turn the machine on. So I'm just pressing the edge of the leather up against the rounded edge of the, the wooden block here. Just keep adding water to let it dry out. And just go around all the edges
anyway you get the idea so again it's a lot quicker than doing it by hand it still requires a bit of time and the more time you spend the higher polish you'll get on that nice that nice edge so um, we put this away and we'll get on with the next step okay so we're back we've put the machine away uh, it's still a bit wet but if you get any little edges that might be puckered up by the burnishing process just take the, the cone shaped end of your burnisher and just go around that will smooth out any raised bumps so, both sides and obviously I'm doing this very quickly because I want to keep the video not too long but obviously you take your time do a really good job and when you're finished upload a picture to the Geordie Leather community and let us all see your work I'd really be interested to see how yours comes out the different variations the different colors the different styles like I see this is a fairly simple shape but um, where, where's my camera there it is but be be adventurous change the shape of the corners change the shape of the top Put some texture in there put some patterns paint on it we're going to be doing some leather painting in an upcoming video so that's something to look forward to so the final step is to this is where the pens are going to sit so ideally you want to wait till the glues had at least a few hours to go hard but we haven't got that time so take a bone folder and just insert that into the little hole there all you want to do is you want to soften up this front piece of leather so that the pens can slide in there without too much effort so let's get in there loosen things up a little bit and that should basically do if you want to go in with your dauber and make the inside the same color you can do that but the final stage is just to put the two holes for the neck um, cord now <clears throat> you can see on the original one i've actually used a bit of car key and uh, this is um, paracord but you can use leather thong leather rope any sort of material you want what you think goes with the particular decoration that you've decided to do your your item in so just for convenience i'm going to use the same khaki colored paracord and we'll do that next here we go so um, this is I believe three mil thick so we need a, a hole slightly bigger than three mil for that to go through so you can take your original pattern now place it over your your original your new newly created product make sure it's all lined up and then just using your scratch jaw just again just mark where those two holes need to be and then if you notice on the actual pattern I have put a stitching line mark on there if you choose to stitch this so it's not a stitching one but you can stitch it obviously if you want to so there are the two marks can you see those on the overhead cam yep so we bring across my little trusty anvil again I had quite a few comments on the last video about me forgetting what this thing was called so I memorized it so we'll put that on there zoom in a little bit further for you so you can see what I'm doing so I'm going to take a what's this is a two and a half I'm going to take a three mil drive punch three mil which should do that nicely so put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing where's my hammer now can you see what I'm doing that's more important well not really but you know what I mean so just center your drive punch over there keeping it nice and squ uh, square well, I notice my camera is now in the wrong position so I'll just sort that out for you okay so keep your drive punch perfectly vertical otherwise you get a wonky hole and there's nothing worse than a wonky hole and just gently twist it hasn't gone all the way through so just that's a bit clogged up there we go let's do that again twist it and 
hopefully we should have a nice hole all the way through there we go we'll just do the same for the other piece the other hole sorry put that over there and there we go two nice clean holes now as i said earlier if you, if you had done that on each separate piece lining these up and getting a perfectly clean hole it's not always easy so it's easier to do it when they're both glued together so that is basically that's that part finished the only bit left to do <coughs> is the the uh, fitting of the paracord now paracord it's a nylon sort of substance so when you cut it the end tends to fray very quickly so you don't cut this with a knife or it says that you cut it with a hot knife and we'll do that next so the first thing to calculate is how long do you want it to be? Now obviously um, where you want it to hang on your chest is entirely up to you, but if you take the paracord, wrap it around your neck and get an approximate sort of idea where you might want it to be positioned, say here, and then just mark that position. You want to cut your cord to that particular length. So like I say, you can't cut this, but you can. You can cut it with a knife, but it will fray within seconds. So I don't recommend it. So just mark where am I? Put that there. So I've got a nice um, quartz slab. You can use any surface as long as it won't be affected by heat. So a piece of glass, a tile, anything which won't be affected by a hot iron be touching it. So I've got a nice quartz slab which I use for this sort of job. So this is a um, a hot knife it's, it's a knife which gets hot when you squeeze the trigger very quickly within seconds it's burning hot so it'll cut the material but also it'll actually weld together all the fibers inside so we'll just do that you just basically squeeze the trigger and within seconds it's red hot can you see that on the camera not very well so i'm going to do it around this way so my hands out the way right so there you go just Bring it down you can see the material melts pull it away and that's actually welded the uh the tip welded the tip of the material together so the fibers won't pull apart so this is the bit we want so i'm just going to do both ends so you can see that again I'll zoom in with the top because it's a bit difficult to see with the the uh, side camera, the angle. So I'm going to do that, turn it on, weld it, pull it away, and there we have one perfectly cut, perfectly sealed end, which won't fray. You can see how this one, this off cut is frayed. That's what happens with this sort of cord. So we don't want that. Right, final step is just to thread it together and put a knot in it, and we're done. <clears throat> so, um, I would suggest that we put the, the loop across the front. So if we put one end in there, pull that through, just put the other end through there as well. So that when they come together, that forms a nice little loop on the front there. I think it's nice and tidy. So just make sure that your ends are the same length. And if you just want to basically tie a knot in there, just string them together, wrap it around your finger, tie a knot in there, pull that knot nice and tight. And if you want to trim the ends a bit, you can do that again quickly, just to keep everything nice and tidy. see I've trimmed those nice and flush you can dab the end with a hot bit if you want to just melt any bits of fibers that do stick out very useful little tool that I use it a lot for nylon braiding uh, webbing this sort of stuff but there we go that is our finished product I'll zoom right out so you get a better view of that now isn't that lovely it's a very simple 
by simple product. When I zoom out again, so you get a better view of that. Very simple. I'm not sure about the colour green personally. I think I prefer the traditional traditional colours, but I'm a bit old fashioned. So all you basically do is ideally let it dry a bit first. It's still a bit wet, but if you squeeze it, that opens up this little opening a bit better, and you can pop in your pens, pencils, whatever you've got. Can't find any pens now, but they can just pop in there, another pen there. So you've always got your pen around your neck, handy. Now, see, a very simple project, but if you don't like sewing, or if you have difficulty sewing because of health issues, there you go, a very simple non-sew project. But if you wanted to, as you can see, you could, you could stitch around the edge, now maybe using a contrasting color thread, and that would look really nice. You could also maybe take a, let's have a look, a big, a lacing chisel and cut some nice slots around there and then maybe wrap it with some lace again a contrasting color would look good whatever you think looks good you're in charge it's your project do it the way you want to so that's it like I say I probably will do some more uh, videos on projects which don't require sewing 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 stitching or sewing because some people just can't do it or find it hard so for now, thank you again. Um, just to remind you that the, the competition for this month is still running until the end of this month. So head over to geordieleather.com, enter and you can, we could win a lifetime membership to the Geordie Leather community. Um, check out the, all the different benefits you see on the screen there. Uh, it's really worth coming across. It's getting very popular. So there's lots of things you can do there, courses, training, extra videos, longer videos, extended videos, all sorts. Anyway, check it out. Be pleased to see you. I'm there most days, so you can chat to me personally, ask questions, share your interest, upload pictures, all that stuff. So head across to georgialeather.com and I'll see you there. Bye-bye for now.